When people think of the very first video game, they often reference Pong from the 1970s. This is actually a widespread misconception. Even the infamous Action 52, released two decades later, has a playable version of it. This was known within the software as the first game. Pong itself came in many iterations because of its rampant success. To see where the true jumpstart happened, you have to travel back even further into the past. According to the video game history timeline found on museumofplay.org, the very first computerized game was actually created decades prior. In the year 1940, the technological marvel was displayed at the World's Fair. This was an era when computers took up lots of real estate. A man named Edward U. Condon had created a computer that's only purpose was to play a game. To take such an expensive and complex technology used for research and make a simple game out of it was a radical idea in that time. This new invention was far ahead of its time. Fortunately, the crowd seemed to love the novelty, as tens of thousands of people at this event tried it out. Seven years later, a patent for an early amusement device was filed. This game was about shooting a gun at a target similar to some games later seen in arcades. In the 1950s, games were slowly being created off of other machines such as chess, tic-tac-toe, blackjack, a war game, checkers, tennis, and a maze game. It took seven years spanning from 1950 to 1957 to get a fully featured game of chess. The tic-tac-toe game was created as part of a student's research at Cambridge in the United Kingdom. The game of blackjack was created on an early IBM computer. The war game was known as Hutchspiel, which used red and blue markers to indicate which team you were on. This appears to be the first game that used color. The game of checkers, also on an early IBM computer, was demonstrated on national television. The technology was gaining attention. It wasn't until 1962 that the computer AI beat a chess master. In December of 1960, a computer programmer by the name of John Bergeson stayed home sick from work one day, and while this happened, he started to develop a baseball simulation game. In January of the new year, his brother Paul assisted him in getting the game running on an IBM 1620. Later that year, a company in the U.S. by the name of Raytheon developed a computer simulation of the current Cold War conflict. This was used by the military. For the time, it was a very advanced program. So advanced, in fact, that it was too complicated for those not initiated with computers. This led to the company creating a more user-friendly version called Grand Strategy. In 1962, an MIT student named Steve Russell created a computer game called Space War. Not only was this game popular on campus, but it later spread to other computers all across the nation. After the Cuban Missile Crisis, the U.S. Department of Defense created a war game, STAGE. STAGE is an acronym that stands for Simulation of Total Atomic Global Exchange. The method for beating this game was discovered. Beating this game displayed that the U.S. could defeat the Soviet Union in a thermonuclear war. By 1964, more and more people learned how to program. John Kennedy from Dartmouth put together a computer timeshare system and the basic programming language. These innovations made it easy for students to code computer games. From that point, more games than ever before were being developed. In 1965, John and his associate Keith created a game using BASIC. A student from that same university programmed the first football game a day after Dartmouth beat Princeton in the Ivy League football championship. The following year, Ralph Bayer thought up an idea of playing a video game on a television while waiting at a bus station. He wrote down his ideas that led to the creation of TV games. The prototype of what became the Magnavox Odyssey was created. It featured a game of tennis as well as other variations on primitive games. Bayer patented the idea in 1968. The future of home entertainment was about to change. Stay tuned next time for more about the Magnavox Odyssey, the birth of true arcade gaming, and the rise of the Atari 2600 in the next chapter of Gaming 101, the 1970s. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to give a like, comment, subscribe, and don't forget to click that notification bell. Thanks for watching.